and good day everyone welcome to the chemical engineering chief platform today we'll focus on a very important aspect in chemical engineering and that is stoichiometry so let's look at the stoichiometric problem that is laid before us and let's answer the questions as asked let's see how we break it down you know because it's very important that we understand the statement and what is it that we have to do in order for us to actually answer what is required so in a process for the manufacture of chlorine by direct oxidation of hcl with a over a catalyst to form chlorine and h2o only the exit product is composed of hcl and given the percentages chlorine water oxygen and nitrogen and those are the percentages there now these percentages what is of utmost importance to note is that these are more percentages or uh, you can say small fractions because this is a gaseous product this x product is a gaseous product and automatically if you can look now i have sketched this problem here you can see that on the product side okay these are the moles that were given there okay co2 19.8 h2o 19.8 hcl 4.4 oxygen 4.0 and nitrogen 52.0 okay so this all these our percentages add up to 100 of course hence we took 100 as our basis okay so that's very key to note so that's how we come up with the basis of 100 you just add up this values that were given and we ask you 100 kilogram moles because it's a gaseous product okay it's a gaseous product so now all these are gases at room temperature so now hcl in the feed they say hcl reacts with oxygen it's there's an oxidation taking place there you can see oxidation there okay so oxidation is taking place so that's how that's how we know that there's oxygen in the feed stream and there's also hcl so hcl and oxygen react giving us chlorine and water only hence it's actually laid out by the reaction here you can see that reaction there okay so now let's look at how do you proceed from there this is our chemical reaction equation hcl reacts i'm sorry about that so we can see now that acl acl reacts with oxygen giving us co2 and h2o and now you can see these numbers there that are actually denoted with the red how do we get that remember you first write down your equation and then you balance it you can see there's a two there there's a half there so that everything is balanced within the reaction equation and then afterwards what you do because you're given 19.8 for the product okay you can just place your 19.8 there and then once you do that you can now use the molar ratios 19.8 is to is to one so this is also 19.8 because the coefficient here is one okay and the equation is one but here it's half so it's going to be divided by two and you get 9.9 .9. here the coefficient is two so it's going to be multiplied by two and you get 39.6 now on the reactant side this is the reactant side these are moles reacting okay and then on the product side here these are moles produced now that's very important now if you go back to the diagram as well you can see there's still acl in the product side and you also have we have acl in the product side also have oxygen this is the acl unreacted and this is the oxygen unreacted it simply tells us that some of the acl that was fed into the system did not react hence it's recovered at the end of the process same thing applies some of the oxygen which was charged into this reactor is recovered at the end of the process okay so that's clear so now our focus is to go and find the limiting reactant so that's what we want to find it's the limiting reactant now how do we go about doing that we need to first find what was initially fed into the system so now we go and say f stream so f stream okay so in f stream we can have the hcl that was fed into the system 
HDL fan is HDL laundry X plus HDL produced. Okay. So the HDL produced. Okay. Uh, well, that's one now here. It's HCL that reacts, and then we're going to have HCL that is produced. So HCL produced in P. Okay, yes. So the HCL produced is that HCL there. If you just see, this is the HCL we're talking about. Okay, and then the HCL that reacts is this HCL that reacts. So that plus that gives you what was produced. So now we just write down the variables. Thirty-nine point this is thirty-nine point six. So the nine point six is this one here. ACL that reacts. Okay. And now plus HCL produced. Okay. So the HCL produced is four point four. 4.4 that's the HCL choose today okay so now what do we get so we get 44 moles you can say you look at the moles we just leave it as moles it's still fine so it's 44 moles when you punch that you calculate so that's how much of the HCL coming in HCL here so this HCL here it's 44 Moles. So let's go and find the oxygen now. Okay. So how much is our oxygen? So oxygen fed. Oxygen in the feed is given by oxygen that reacts plus oxygen produced. So oxygen in P. Okay. So the oxygen that reacts is this oxygen here 9.9 .9. and the oxygen that is produced is this oxygen 4.0 okay so it's 9.9 .9. okay plus the oxygen produced which is plus 4.0 okay so the total there is 13.9 moles okay so now that's how you determine your moles. Now, once you have that, it becomes easier for you to determine the limiting reactant. Now we can start answering the question. Okay, so the limiting reactant in this case, we need to find. Okay, so you go now and say part A. We want to find the limiting reactant in A. Say so maximum extent of reaction. Because this is the theoretical assumption, so here we assume if the reaction were to go to completion, what would what would be the limiting reactant? So Ni stands for the final moles subtract NiO, which is the initial moles divided by the stoichiometry coefficient, okay, of that particular component, and then we do the same thing with the with the other component. Can just do that there. It's the maximum extent of reaction of oxygen. And then Ni initial final moles subtract initial moles divided by the stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, of oxygen. You place a negative sign here because this is a reactant and it's disappearing. Same thing applies HCl. Is also a reaction that we have got a negative sign, negative sign there. Now remember these variables Ni is the moles remaining after that action. And if the reaction were to go to completion, NiO is the initial moles that were initially charged into the reactor. So the initial moles we found them, the same as the moles in feed. So these are the initial moles 44 for HCl, and these are the initial moles for, for oxygen. But now, if we are determining the limiting reactant, because we assume that the reaction goes to completion, it means that the remaining moles of HCl becomes zero. Okay, subtract initial moles of HCl. Okay, so 44. 44 
divided by the stoichiometric coefficient, which is two. This is negative two. Okay, and that works out to twenty-two moles. Okay, and then same thing applies the side for oxygen. That many moles is zero, and then we've got thirteen moles as the initial divided by the stoichiometric coefficient. In this case, it's negative half. We take it from the reaction equation here. Okay, this is the negative half. Okay, now remember it's negative because it's disappearing. That's very important. Because if you forget to place the negative sign, you might just get a funny solution. Okay, so proceeding now, punching that from your calculator is 27.8 moles. Okay, so now you just compare the two values. 22 moles for HCl and 27.8 moles for oxygen. Then you take the smaller one. This is the smaller value. So HCl becomes our limiting reactant because it's smaller than oxygen. So HCl is the limiting reactant. So it's as easy as that. Is the limiting. Okay. Okay, so now we've actually answered the first part of the question. Okay, so now we need to go and check now the second part we're required to find the excess percentage. So now let's go and look at the problem statement again. So you can see now here we've got the excess percentage. Excess percentage. So remember the excess reactant is the species that would actually remain at the end of the reaction. If the reaction were to go to completion, remember these are theoretical assumptions. Okay, so most most cases you might find that uh, most of the processes do not go to 100% completion practically. But because this is a theoretical assumption, it is assumed that the reaction would go to 100%. So now let's answer the percentage. Excess percentage. So excess percentage percentage excess. Just apply the formula there. It's given by uh, the species that is in excess, it's oxygen. Now, if you look at what the our results, look at this one here. Oxygen is more than 22. More so, ACL is the limiting of which means oxygen is the excess. So, you use oxygen in this equation. So, oxygen entering, subtract oxygen that is required for complete reaction so you must always have the cr it stands for complete reaction oxygen required for complete reaction that's important because all the processes have to have to be complete so now you focus on that so now, how do you get, you know, oxygen coming into the system? We've calculated it when we're determining the feed stream here. It's 13 point. So we've got 13.9. Okay. 13.9. Subtract. You can see it even there. Oxygen coming into the system. It's 13.9. Okay. Remember, I said this is initial moles. Okay. So now, 13.9 subtract. Oxygen required. So the oxygen required is a bit tricky, but now not that much. You just have to use the reaction equation. So now you can see the reaction equation here. Do this two is is the coefficient of the limiting reactant. The half is the coefficient of the excess reactant, which is oxygen, and 44 is the moles of the limiting reactant there is there are moles of the limiting reactant rather that is fed into the system so the moles of the limiting reactant fed is 44 and then two is the the coefficient of the limiting reactant and then half here is the coefficient of the excess reactant so now when we have to find 
oxygen required here because it's the excess is the moles of the limiting reactant fed which is 44 okay so it's 44 multiplied by the moles of the stoichiometric coefficient okay of the excess which is half okay divided by the moles of the stoichiometric coefficient of the limiting which is two okay yeah so this two here is the co coefficient the two here is the stoichiometric coefficient of the hcl this two this half is the stoichiometric coefficient of the excess okay so now you do the same thing you just substitute in the equation and then here this is all over 44 multiplied by 1 over 2 times 2 that's like 4 okay so and then what do you get there remember everything is multiplied by 100 okay so the percentage axis so this simplifies to 26.4 percent so the excess reactant is in excess by 26.4 percent okay yeah so now you found that so moving further now what you also need to go and find now it's the doc which is the degree of completion this is a very important aspect the degree of completion so the degree of completion how do you find it the degree of completion measures how far the reaction would go in respect of the limiting reactant because it is assumed that because the limiting reactant runs out first therefore it measures the degree of the reaction how far will it go okay so now how do we find it now by definition then it's self-explanatory so see, degree of completion doc okay let's just so it's degree of completion doc so it's the limiting reactant that reacts over the limiting reactant that is fed okay yeah this is the limiting reactant fed okay so now the limiting reactant that reacts is hcl so hcl that reacts to the ratio this is the ratio of the of the limiting reaction that reacts which is acl and then acl that is actually fed so that's what you do then you substitute acl that reacts is 39.6 okay if you check acl that reacts here acl that reacts is 39.6 and then ACL that is fed is 44 moles. Okay, simple as straightforward. So now you go there. ACL that reacts. Okay, 39, and then other one is 44. Then you can find the degree of completion. Calculation is 0 0.9. So 0 0.9 this is a, a fraction, of which means this in percentage form is 90%. And it tells you this is a good degree of completion so it goes as far as 90 percent okay because really practically you wouldn't have a reaction okay that goes completely completely to 100 percent so 90 percent or 0 0.9 is actually a good doc because which means out of the 44 moles this simply tells you out of the 44 moles that were fed 39.6 moles reacted giving a degree of completion of 90 percent okay so which, which means the remaining moles are the moles that haven't reacted okay so now the other one that we need to go and find is the is the extent of reaction the extent of reaction okay so let's look at that now so let's just check from our question extent of reaction the so how do you find the extent 
okay in this question it's not really specified so you can pick any component okay it's just measured by the moles that react that will actually bring the process to completion the extent of what does the selection go in terms of the moles that react or in terms of the moles that are produced okay so now what we're doing now this is the actual extent of reaction so we go and write extent of reaction extent of reaction this is actual it's not maximum actual extent of reaction hcl okay final moles subtract initial moles all over stoichiometric coefficient now you can see the difference here this is the actual extent now what we did before we determined the it wasn't the actual it was the maximum extent of reaction because here there was a theoretical assumption okay but now the difference between that and that is because here we don't assume it goes to 100 percent completion and this question it's actual okay so even the remaining moles we're gonna write the remaining moles there and we're also gonna have initial moles and the stoichiometric coefficient but this still stays true this is still negative okay so now we've got 4.4 moles that are remaining in the system okay remember we got the, the moles remaining in the system here so, so we've got the moles that are remaining which is 4.4 okay yeah so we just write the 4.4 moles remaining in the system so 4.4 moles remaining in the system as subtract 44 moles initially fed divided by the stoichiometric coefficient which is negative 2 we have 19.8 moles reacting so that's the extent uh, of the moles reacting okay so and then lastly now we need to go and find so that's the extent the actual extent so now let's look at the other question here okay and see what is it that we have to determine now all these uh, variables are very important as far as stoichiometry is concerned so here now we have the selectivity now selectivity is the ratio of the desired product to the ratio of the undesired product okay so now let's look at how we find selectivity so the ratio of the desired to the undesired product so selectivity is desired over undesired I don't really like to use desired and undesired here I'd rather use this is a byproduct not undesired okay byproduct because all these products can be utilized in other processes so byproduct okay so we hear the byproduct in this reaction equation is water okay and then the other one that you have there the main product is chlorine okay the main product is chlorine and the byproduct is water as, as with nasty okay so this is the main product main product and then this is the byproduct okay so you just use the most there okay yeah and then you can actually even use the uh, the kilograms it works best that way okay so the desired product being chlorine which is 19.8 times 70 this is the molecular weight okay or the molar mass 70 and then the other is also 19.8 okay let's just do that again other one is 19.8 and the molecular weight of water Let's look at and then almost just dwindled down 
let's look at it let's see when it comes back okay there we go so let's just go back to that problem that we're solving here okay so this one is actually multiplied by 18 that's the molecular weight of water okay and then we get that's the ratio the 3.89 okay so that's the selectivity it's 3.8 now so the desired product two the undesired product is 3.89 as the factor that you can actually use to see how much of the desired product you are producing with respect to the undesired product and then you just compare okay so that is that okay because the other one f is just a, another ratio okay it's eight kilograms of water produced to the kilograms to the kilograms of acl produced kilograms of acl fed so this is just a ratio then it's easier to find 19.8 multiplied by the molecular weight of water divided by 44 which is acl fed and then you also convert that using a molecular weight then you can get that to be 0 0.225 okay the 0 0.225 is the kilograms of water produced for every kilogram of hcl fed that's what it means okay so now you can go back and just review everything and see if you got everything right so in stoichiometric problems it's just a matter of understanding the terminology and also understanding how to utilize the chemical reaction equation once you can do that everything becomes simple okay now thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time thank you for joining chemical engineering g platform bye bye